we gathered videos from this year, you may miss it. Let's start with overweight budgie. Do you have overweight budgie? And hey, make sure to subscribe. Thank you. Many owners assume they don't need to record the weight of a small parrot like a budgie or parakeet. But I think it's just the opposite. Because these birds are so small, they are likely to cover up any illness and not let you catch on that they are sick until it's too late. Good boy. The long average weight of budgies will range from 25 grams to 60 grams, but mine average around 30 to 40 grams. 40 grams normally means they are pretty full for my birds. As long as the scale calculates in grams, you're good to go. A perch makes it easiest. Right now, you can probably find them on sale though. I wouldn't choose any other scale, this one is perfect. I can weigh every bird from a budgie to a hyacinth macaw. It gets the job done. So make sure you weigh your small birds too. This way you can catch a pattern in weight loss that you may not see by just looking at your bird. There are all kinds of hazards around the home, even like this window. In this video, we are going to teach you how to keep your budgie safe. Stop eating. Being the owner, you are responsible for keeping your budgie safe from any home hazards he is exposed to. You need to educate yourself about the potential dangers for budgies to cherish their stay at your home for a longer period and also to keep them safe. The most important thing to remember is to provide a suitable atmosphere for your pet bird since he's very sensitive to atmospheric changes. There are numerous atmospheric hazards budgies are exposed to, even while in the cage. Sudden changes in temperature weakens the budgie's immune system and makes them prone to bacterial and viral infections. So make sure to introduce them to temperature changes gradually. Apart from that, toxic fumes can have a deadly impact on budgies as their respiratory system is too sensitive to even a minuscule amount of toxin. Keep them far away from scented candles, perfumes, air fresheners, paints, aerosols, and smoke. Also, the fumes from nonstick cookware leaves a toxin called polytetrafluorethylene, which is harmful to budgies even if released in small quantities. There is a potential risk of facing physical hazards by the budgie in numerous manners. Protect the bird from open holes in your home, like sink or flush. Do not forget to close the doors and windows whenever you want to take a budgie out of the cage. Never sleep with them, as they might get crushed under you. Take utmost care that they do not chew up any hazardous chemical, poisonous household plants, or electrical wire. Never leave sharp objects like knives or scissors in the open when your budgie is out of his cage. Use bird safe cleaning products like borax or vinegar. Keep them away from hot materials like burning stove, microwave, heaters, hot cooking oil, boiling water, etc. Remember to turn off fans and coolers during out of cage experiences. Budgies also need protection from other pets like cats and dogs. Carefully examine Budgies' toys every time for any breakage before letting him play with them. Last but not least, Budgies should not be exposed to noise pollution. These little creatures do enjoy sounds and music, 
but cannot tolerate it after a certain limit. Loud noises from television or radio, sounds of large household appliances like a vacuum cleaner or food processor cause stress in many birds. Moreover, budgies should not be exposed to other normal sounds out of their waking hours. In case your pet bird gets hurt due to an unfortunate incident, take him to the nearest vet for immediate medical attention. Since you added that little life into your family, it is your responsibility to do everything you can to protect him. Budgies have special power. They can glow. Now, we're going to tell you one story. One study which left some great consequences. Around 2010 or 2011, one ecology professor was helping his student to investigate beak coloration for his graduation. That student brought UV light, he pointed that light at the bird, and then he switched it on. Then the whole amphitheater was surprised. They say that Burge's beak was fluorescent like it was painted. From that moment on, everyone changed their thoughts about little budgies, and they started saying how cool these birds are. They are so tiny, but they are amazing. It is like some small creatures have very interesting powers. Their glowy nose was something really impressive to everyone. Also, it turns out that a lot of species glow in a special way that we cannot see. They are using different methods. Actually, two different methods, but they are a mystery to many researchers. But an important thing for you, if you want to understand birds' radiancy, you have to understand UV light and learn something about it. It is so interesting because of the different ways which make things visible. Because of the complex construction of humans' eyes, we can only see that visible spectrum. That is the light that is made up of wavelengths from 390 nanometers, we see it as a purple color, to 720 nanometers, red color. Ultraviolet UV light is much shorter than that. UV light is made up of wavelengths from about 100 to 400 nanometers. Remember, we can't see it, but birds are the ones who can. Many studies have shown that UV light can help birds for everything during their life. From some essential tasks, such as finding food, to some more complex tasks, like differentiating which are their eggs and which are nest parasites. A few, similar to grouses, use it to all the more successfully search for bilberries, which begin reflecting UV light when they're ready. Researchers have discovered that this plays a huge role in the bird society. Dr. Justin Marshall, with his colleagues, has discovered that the UV pigments on little budgies' feathers play an enormous role in their attractiveness to the opposite sex. Well, now we are talking about something very interesting. Maybe some of you, but the very small number did know that the little budgie has feathers on his cheeks, that he has crowns on his head, that they are reflecting ultraviolet light, which is unmistakable in courting displays. Also, budgies have four types of color-detecting cells in their eyes, while people have one less. Because of those four cells in their eyes, they can see into the UV spectrum so to a budgie, the pigmented feathers show up very, very bright. The light green budgie had some bright fluorescing feathers. Yellow budgies also had very bright fluorescing feathers. But what is interesting, blue and albino budgies didn't have fluorescing feathers. That's because they don't have any yellow pigment. Also, what is interesting, black-eyed yellow budgie had some fluorescing feathers but that was way, way darker than the others. This is the same for female or male adults. If you are one of the owners who breed different types of budgies, you have to remember a few things. Firstly, remember that blue budgies will find mates more difficult than the other ones. 
they want to bond just with green type budgies. That's why you should breed green or yellow budgies. Also, if you are one of the serious breeders, you can forget about this problem if you place one pair of budgies in a cage. In that case, you won't allow them to choose their mate. A pair of blue budgies won't be bad for breeding, but remember, they will always choose green budgies to mate. Okay. There are all kinds of diseases for birds. Let me show you how we disinfect budgie cage to make budgie safe. And now, a vinegar. With the help of these guys. And the blush. Are you helping or what? We got an interesting budgie window perch for birds who love watching through the window. I can use this even in my glass case. Every budget is scared of everything new, but you can always use new. They love milk. If your bird's nails are too long, let me show you how we manage that little problem.
I got tons of advice that ranged from taking the parakeets to a vet so we wouldn't break their trust with us to don't take them to a vet for a nail clipping because they will probably have a heart attack and die. So, we could safely assume that the answers lay somewhere in between those two extremes. One thing that most folks agreed on is that trying to use the previously purchased small animal nail scissors was a terrible idea, and that it would be much easier to use regular small fingernail nail clippers meant for humans. Another tip that I thought we should try was covering their faces while they were toweled to keep them calmer and reduce our risk of being bitten. I also knew that we needed to separate the parakeets for a nail clipping and take the patient to another room where they wouldn't distract each other. This meant that the other human would need to stay in the waiting room with the parakeet on deck to keep them quiet. We were thinking that a ton of flock calling would be just as bad as being in the same room. You may need a helper. While it's not absolutely necessary, it will be a great help to have someone else hold the parakeet while you clip his claws. Eventually, you will learn to do it by yourself, but for now, it's wise to have some help. You do not need to squeeze him, just hold him in place very gently. As long as he can't spread his wings, he cannot go anywhere. Before you clip each nail, it's important that you carefully examine it and locate the vein. Parakeets have veins that run about halfway through the upper portion of their claws. It would look like a red line and should be clearly visible through light-colored claws. You should avoid cutting the vein. Just place the tip of the claw into the center of the clippers and squeeze the handles together. While this may scare your parakeet a little, don't worry. It doesn't hurt him a bit to have his nails clipped. What if you cut a vein? If you accidentally cut a vein, don't panic. Your parakeet will be just fine. Put some cornstarch or baby powder or some flour in the palm of your free hand and dip the bleeding nail in it. It will help stop the bleeding. It will heal and your parakeet will be okay. After you've clipped all of your parakeet's claws, you're finished. Simply release him from your grasp. He will recover very quickly from any stress he may have been experiencing just moments ago. You will need to repeat this process every time you notice his claws getting too long. Look, he loves his mirror. Ooh. And he's scared from the rest of the Budgy flock. Don't make my mistake and keep that mirror away from the budgies. A mirror will move around and tap your budgie on the beak as he pecks at it, and will give the impression of being an animated, friendly companion, albeit a very quiet one. If you only keep a single bird, a mirror can be a useful social backup when there's pressure on your budgie quality time. However, it's a big however, it is always best to keep more than one bird, whether a mirror is involved or not. Nothing can entirely replace a flesh and blood companion bird. Once there are two or more budgies in the cage, the mirror is not usually an issue. It adds to the illusion of more birds, and that's a good thing. In a cage of two or more birds, the one in the mirror won't receive much attention, unless you have a very timid budgie who finds this quiet mirror friend to his liking. With just a single bird in a cage, the bird in the mirror becomes the chief companion. Your pet budgie will talk to it, click beaks with it, 
attack it when he's angry, and sometimes attempt to feed it with regurgitated seed. If his head feathers are raised, when he taps the mirror with his beak, he is flirting. A budgie tends to go through several moods over the course of a day. Sometimes, he will want to bicker and shove his companions around a bit. A lone bird has no other outlet for this than his toys, and mirrors tend to get most of the aggressive attention. This is normal. Brief disagreements are part of the budgie's everyday life. But if you feel he is spending an inordinate amount of time attacking his own reflection, you should take it as an enormous hint to get a second bird. His unusually high levels of aggression are probably fueled by frustration and the need for more socializing. If the male bird of a mating pair is constantly agitated by the handsome, silent rival in the mirror, he's spending more time fighting the reflection of himself than courting his partner, remove it. Three's a crowd. A budgie who begins regurgitating seed to his reflection in the mirror is well advanced in the Bergirigar mating ritual. He thinks the reflection is his mate and he's trying to feed her. If this happens once or twice but doesn't reoccur, it's nothing to worry about. Serial feeding, though, indicates that the bird is in need of some proper budgie company. If your budgie gets into the habit of throwing up his seed for the benefit of a friend in the mirror, it's best to remove the mirror from the cage. This might seem mean, but there is a danger of throat irritation. The budgie will regurgitate the seed and, when the bird in the mirror fails to accept it, will swallow it again and repeat the process. The seed has digestive fluid in it, and if this is swallowed several times, it will irritate the budgie's throat, tongue, and crop. Thank you all for watching. If you want more budgie videos, make sure to subscribe and like this video. And thank you, Budgie Nation. Watch next. Can budgies kill each other? Or budgie harness? Visit our official webpage for more information and budgie care.